right, welcome to Bearded Audio ASMR, the tutorial for Audacity for people who create ASMR content. All right, this is going to be a very quick and dirty way to use Audacity if you do ASMR content. This isn't going to be some long, drawn-out tutorial. This is going to be what I think you should do when you are recording in Audacity for ASMR content. And this is going to be the 101 for that. And then I'm going to have, you know, 102, 103, or 201, 301, whatever, where I can really dive into um, what Audacity is capable of. But for right now, I want to show you what I think you should do to your audio before you export it to whatever you add um, the video part to, whether you edit in iMovie or Premiere or... Um, Sony Vegas or whatever. All right, so let's look up here first First you have your sound card which in Mac is just core audio um, I could have other sound cards if I wanted to and I if one windows you're gonna have some more options, but um, Default is almost always going to be fine. Otherwise you can troubleshoot and help which I'll show you later This actually has a fantastic guide Next you're going to be selecting your input and if you use a Yeti you'll see the Yeti here uh, if you're just using your microphone headphone or the, the built-in microphone on your computer, you'll see it there. Or headphone microphones, uh, you'll see it there. Uh, Soundflower is internal kind of virtual patching. Don't worry about it. Uh, you're going to say you're recording in stereo because this is ASMR. And then um, you're going to say where it's outputting. And usually built-in output is going to be fine. I have multi-output so that um, that's just a custom output I built in my MacBook that kind of helps with recording stuff um, all right so let's now that we've got that set up the nice thing about audacity is that you can check your levels up here check that my right mic is working check that my left mic is working they're both working that's fantastic and we just hit record and we're going all right this is kind of the nice thing about audacity is it's real quick all right so now that we're recording one thing you always want to do is take 10 or so seconds at the beginning uh, of your video so that you can later um, use it as a noise profile to reduce background noise. All right, so we're going to do that right now. We're going to stop. And it always feels longer than it actually is. Um, so there's the 10 seconds of, of silence, all right? And let's say this is a full, um, you know, 20 minute, um, a full 20 minute recording. The first thing you need to do before you do anything, any editing, any cleaning is go to, um, export under file, export it as a WAV file. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say it's going to download or we're going to save it to downloads. I'm going to call this Audacity Toot. And we're going to hit save. Uh, one thing this does, which is pretty cool, is you can add metadata. Um, so if you wanted to, you know, I could say uh, this is bearded audio and the track title is tutorial. And I'll show you where this shows up. Um, you know, and this came out 2018. Genre is ASMR. Any comments? You know, hey. And um, what I'll do is I'll just hit OK. And uh, it will, because that was short, it's going to be pretty quick um, to show up. Let's go to Downloads. There it is, Audacity Toot. There it is. All right. And now you can you can see if I go to info, uh, the title of the song is Tutorial by Bearded Audio. Um, the comment is, hey, genres ASMR. So that's where metadata kind of kicks in, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's not a built-in feature of a lot of different programs. But um, so now that you have that exported, I'm going to explain destructive editing and the reason why you want to make sure you have an original copy of what you've recorded is because any changes you make to this are going to be permanent unless you know you can hit undo 
and that'll undo something. But if you're really far down the line, uh, you'll have to undo, you know, a bunch of changes that you've made, um, in order to get back to the one change that you wanted to undo. And that is called destructive editing. And I am not a fan of destructive editing. Uh, but it is what Audacity has. And I will show you what non-destructive looks like a little later. So the first thing you're going to do here is, um, in fact, before we get a noise, noise profile, let's select everything using Control A or Command A on Mac. Go to Effect, Compressor. Don't even worry about this yet. I, I will dive into how a compressor works later. We're not going to worry about that. For ASMR, these settings are fine. Hit OK. Cool. And it's not really a one size fits all kind of thing, but this is going to be a one size fits most kind of thing. Now we'll hit play record and we're going. All right. This is kind of the nice thing about, and this is going to be super helpful in just getting your stuff, um, to a decent volume. Um, and you'll see the waveform gets larger and louder. Um, and this affects not only the loudest parts, but the quietest parts. You'll see we can see audio now where we couldn't before, right? If I undo that, right? See, there's nothing there. And then we'll redo that. And you can see it. Now let's listen. There is the, the noise that we're going to try and get rid of. So now we'll select that noise. Go to Effect. We will go to Noise Reduction. Get the Noise Profile. It's now gotten the noise profile from that section. We'll go ahead, hit uh, Command or Control A, go back to noise reduction. And I think the default here is 12. So let's stick with the defaults and we'll go ahead and hit OK. And you can see right here, if we listen to this part now, it has taken that noise and reduced it by 12 dB, which is great. Now let's go back to the beginning record and we're going all right this is kind of the nice thing about audacity is it's real quick all right so now that we're record now one thing that i know a lot of people realize this happens but when you do reduce noise qual or noise um, from the background you are also taking away quality of your voice because it's looking at what it hears when it's quiet that background noise and it gets the profile of that and then it reduces that by 12 dB and those some of those same frequencies are going to be what makes up your voice and so that's where that kind of tinny almost like whistling or like you know you call them like it's an artifact really is what you technically call it the artifacts that really tinny high-pitched swirling sound um, that comes from adding noise reduction if you add too much noise reduction it'll get really bad right so if I undo the noise reduction and I go in and I do even more let's let's do you know let's kill 24 dB and I listen to it now record and we're going all right this is kind of the nice thing about and you can really you can especially in the beginning you can really hear that swirly record and we're going all right that swirly effect that is not there I just undid the noise reduction. Let's listen again. Record. And we're going. All right. This is kind of the nice. All right. See, it's not there. And I'm going to redo that noise floor reduction. Listen again. Record. And we're going. All right. This is kind of the nice. So use this not like crazy. Use it sparingly uh, or use it lightly. So I would say, you know, if you do add noise reduction, maybe try just doing negative eight or taking it down by eight, right? Cause it's still going to help reduce that background noise, but record and we're going. All right. And you'll hear it a little bit there, but it's not as bad. Now, in my opinion, uh, if you're going to do all of your slicing, uh, to match your video, then you're kind of done, um, here. In my opinion, your 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 audio is kind of cleaned up as good as it's going to get in Audacity. Um, if you want to clean it up even more, 
I would recommend using the multi-tool here. And here's where you can actually go in. And if I go, oh, see that peak right there? I don't like that. I could go in. I could add um, some automation here. And I could actually go in and adjust that real quick. Bring that down. That audio. I could go in over here and say, oh, that part's a little too loud. Let's squeeze that a little bit. Maybe just squeeze that a little bit. Squeeze that a little bit. Um, and that's pretty cool. Um, it's a really quick and easy way to do automation in um, Audacity, which I do appreciate. I think is pretty neat. Um, so you can do that if you want to. Um, then you can, if you really want to get crazy, you can zoom in all the way to uh, view a sample. All the way in there. And you will have, in one second... Uh, you have 44,100 of these if your sample rate is uh, 44.1. And you can go in with a pencil tool. And, you know, if you have one that's like popping way up here because something weird happened, you can go, nope, get back down there, which is super cool. Um, so Audacity definitely has some pros. But let me show you real quick what non-destructive editing looks like in Reaper, right? So... Uh, what I would do now is I would go uh, export this, export as wave, and you can call it um, whatever I called that first one, but you can say toot, edit. I go ahead, export it. Uh, it's the same stuff. You say this is called tutorial two. Okay, uh, we can go to finder. There's the edit, right? So we've got Audacity toot, the first one. And we got the edit. which is super duper cool. Uh, but let's hop over real quick to Reaper right here where I've recorded something already and I'll show you what non-destructive editing looks like. All right, so if we listen to this and I just track some new stuff and I'm like, hey, what's up? How you doing? So in Audacity, I would need to select, you know, these two things and then I would go up to uh, plugins up here and I would add compression. What I do here is I can put the two tracks I recorded onto under a larger track, and you would call this busing, and that's something we can get into in a more advanced tutorial. But I can add effects to this. I can find a compressor, in this case, just the compressor that comes with Reaper, add it. I can see what it's doing to the audio in real time, and in this case, live to what I'm talking about. But let's listen to this. And I just track some new stuff. And what I can do is say, okay, so I want the ratio. You'll notice a lot of the verbiage is the same. In Audacity, it was four to one. Uh, the attack was, I think it was two milliseconds. So, you know, we can go over here and say, I want that to be two. Uh, the release was really long. It was like 7,000 or seven seconds or something. And you can, you can 7,000 milliseconds. Um, you know, your, your ratio, let's go by this knee size is going to be um, how sharp that edge is um, which is kind of hard to visualize without seeing that kind of line that you saw in um, Audacity and now what I can do is take the threshold here and as I lower it you'll see the compressor kick in over there right here watch and I just track some new stuff. I'm like, hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm doing great. That's fine. All right. And it's there. I don't have to hit apply. I don't have to do anything like that. And I can also hit auto makeup to help with the volume. And I just track some new stuff. I'm like, hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm doing great. And you're not committed. So I could do all sorts of stuff to this. I could go, okay, well, I want the EQ. Let's use the built-in EQ that comes with Reaper so I can add a high-pass filter here. Maybe I want a uh, low-pass filter here. You know, I go oh, do all sorts of cool fun stuff with that. Um, and then, you know, I can go and I say, okay, now I want some reverb. So I'll go, I'll use uh, reverb here. Uh, we'll do this, and I'm crazy, but now 
now if I want to remove it, all I have to do is uncheck it, right? I'm not committed to any of these, and that's non-destructive editing. Uh, Audacity has destructive where I say, okay, I want to compress this, and I'm going to commit to it. Um, and the thing that's also nice about Reaper is that if I want to edit the video after I've recorded it, all I need to do um, is find the video, which, let's see, here's an old one that I did. Click and drag it in. Hit Control-Shift-V. There's the video window. And you can edit um, the video right in Reaper and uh, export the whole thing. And it's a very quick and easy and awesome process. This is from my cold fry challenge. Um, anyways, that is Reaper, which is great. But if you want to, it's Reaper 60 bucks, so it's not expensive. But if you want to stick with Audacity, what I recommend is you uh, record, export that recording uh, as soon as you're done. And then once you've exported the original, you can come in here, add, select everything, add the compressor, uh, the compression, the compressor, um, release time. The fact that you can do 30 seconds release time is crazy. Um, and then uh, after you've added that compression to it, then you can do your noise reduction, but always to make sure that you record the, uh, the, the, the blank kind of space in the beginning of your video so, so that you have a place to get that noise floor. Um, or to, uh, how does it word it? Get noise profile. Um, yeah, that is Audacity, quick and dirty. I would love to do a second video if you found this helpful and you want to dive a little bit deeper into um, editing further for ASMR within uh, Audacity. I am happy to oblige, um, but hopefully this helps to clarify some stuff. If not, please feel free to comment. If you've got a question, I'm happy to answer and help out uh, and make another video to kind of help um, other ASM artists out there who just want to record solid audio. So that's it. Thanks for watching.